Hello everyone, how are you? It's Wow Wednesday, isn't it? And a while back we used to have Winnie on Wednesday. But I finished all of my Winnie stories, didn't I? However, I do have this one here. It's called Professor Puffledorf's Secret Potion. And if you look at the picture, it's very similar to a lot of the stories with Winnie in, isn't it? Because it's been illustrated by Corky Paul. And Corky Paul was the illustrator of all of the Winnie stories. This story has been written by Robin Sanez. If we have a look at the side here, all right, it tells us Robert Sanez and Corky Paul, Professor Puffledorf's Secret Potions, and it's been published by Oxford, Oxford Books. On the back here, it tells us when Professor Puffledorf leaves Enzo to look after her little guinea pig and her top secret potions, he hatches a wicked plan. But there's an unexpected ending for Enzo. Shall we find out and see what happens? A bit unusual. Here we go. Now, just like the Winnie stories, here we are, look. They've got these pictures at the front and at the back. And look, you can tell that Professor Puffledorf is a professor, a scientist, because they've got their white scientist coats on. And look, all of their different potions and things over here as well. So, here we go. Professor Puffledorf was the world's greatest scientist. You may have some of her inventions in your own home. Perhaps unburnable toast, or a banana matic, or maybe a smello telephone. Goodness me, and look, everyone there eating their toast. Professor Puffledorf's laboratory was a wonderful place, full of odd-shaped bottles and tubes and strange-looking machines that hissed and steamed and spluttered and squeaked. Wow, we look at all of those. I think I quite like this bit up here with all of the chains and wheels and things. On a cluttered counter in this laboratory was a cosy cage, and in this cage lived a guinea pig named Chip. There we go. He was a friendly little creature, bright and clever. Professor Puffledorf loved Chip, and Chip loved her. Professor Puffledorf's assistant was a man named Enzo, a lazy, grumbling fellow. As he swept the floor, he mumbled, Look at the professor, just sitting at her desk while I do all the work. She's rich and famous, but whoever heard of poor, honest Enzo? And he swept the dust into a crack under the linoleum. One day, when Professor Puffledorf was going to a conference, she said to Enzo, Please wash all of the thistle tubes and dust the... Madgeberg hemispheres, and this time try to remember to turn off the titanium blender when you leave. Then she put on her hat and went out. As soon as the professor had gone, Enzo jumped into her chair and put his feet up on the desk. Ah, yes, this is where I belong, he said, and helped himself to the professor's dish of peppermints. Suddenly, his eye fell on a cabinet marked Top Secret. The cabinet was locked with two padlocks and three combination locks, and Enzo had been told never, never to open it. Wowie, look at that. That's a fancy looking safe there, isn't it? But he forgot that now and rummaged through the professor's desk until he found the keys and the combinations. Soon the top secret cabinet stood wide open, revealing a colourful row of bottles filled with mysterious potions. <laughs> Enzo picked one up. It said, Hair today. For thick, red, curly hair instantly, take ten drops and count to five. Enzo was about to put the bottle to his lips, but he hesitated. He knew that many of the professor's top secret formulas had not been tested. 
they might not work. They might even be poisonous. Then Enzo had a wicked idea. Try it on the guinea pig first. He measured ten drops into Chip's water bottle. Oh, Chippy, he called. Tea time! And as Chip drank the potion, Enzo counted anxiously. One, two, three, four, <laughs> five! What do you think might happen? <gasps> it worked! Goodness me, look at that. Chip's furry little head was suddenly covered with thick, red, curly hair. Enzo began to prance around the laboratory, clapping his hands and singing, I'll be rich, I'll be rich, at last I'll be rich. He knew that many people would pay a great deal of money for hair today. So Enzo decided to steal the formula from Professor Puffendorf. Enzo went back to the top secret cabinet to see what else he could steal. The next bottle said, sweet song, for a beautiful voice, six drops and count to five. Enzo brought the bottle to Chip's cage and gave him six drops. Then he counted, one, two, three, four, five. Let's have a look. It worked. Chip began to sing with a voice so rich and melodious that the tears came into Enzo's eyes. Enzo could hardly believe his look. Why, that cabinet must be filled with rare and wonderful inventions, secret potions, and that would make him rich for the rest of his life. Now, thought Enzo, I'll finally get what I deserve. He went to try a third bottle. This one said, Best wish, count uh, one drop and count to five. Your heart's fondest wish will come true. Enzo's greedy eyes nearly popped out of his head. I'll wish to be the boss. Best wish, why, this is all I need. I'll just wish to be rich and famous and, I know, no, the mayor, no, no, I'll, I'll wish to be the king. But just as he was about to swallow the potion, he remembered it might not have been tested. Better give some to Chip first. Enzo looked at Chip with an evil glint in his eye. With trembling fingers, he measured out one drop, saying, Make a wish, boy, whatever your little rodent heart desires, a ton of alfalfa, a new treadmill, you name it, Chippy, and it's yours. Chip swallowed the potion obediently as Endo counted. One, two, three, four, five. Shall we have a look, see what happened? <gasps> it worked! Goodness me, look what's happened. Here's Chip. But where's Enzo? <gasps> He's up in the cage. Deary me. When Professor Puffendorf came back that evening, she knew at once what had happened. The top secret cabinet was open. Chip was singing a magnificent tune as he swept the floor and Enzo was running on the treadmill. Down here, look. You're a very silly man sighed the professor, shaking her head at Enzo, and you got just what you deserved. She passed a sunflower seed through the bars of this cage. But don't worry, my dear, I'm sure I can get you out of this mess. But first, she continued, turning to Chip, I'm famished. Would you care to join me for tea, an unburnable toast, and then perhaps a game of draft? Yes, thank you, said Chip. That will be lovely. Then he put away his broom, hung up his coat and followed the professor out of the lab, remembering to shut off the titanium blender as he left. 
and look, there they all are. So, bit of an unusual story there, wasn't it? And did he get what he deserved at the end? Absolutely, he shouldn't have gone into that top secret cabinet, should he? Never mind. Right, I'm going to finish there. You have a lovely evening. All right, you take care of yourselves and I'll see you all again very, very soon. Take care. Bye.